We're going to take a look at a US MRE or meal ready to eat. This one is menu number 22, Asian style beef strips with vegetables, and it's from 2016. This menu was introduced in 2012, but this is going to be the first time I'm going to have a chance to try one. I was able to get a number of 2016 MREs from somebody who was able to purchase them from a commissary, and uh, this is probably the one that I've been most looking forward to. As I said, it's from 2016. Uh, this is a Warner Company one, and it does not have a date code on it. Uh, I know it's from 2016 because basically all the other ones that I got from the same lot were from 2016, and also has a sticker from the commissary of the PX, which has the price on it and also has uh, a date of 8 2019 or August 2019. And they put this on to show what the inspection date is on the case when they open them up to put these out for sale. As I said, I've never had this menu before, and it's going to be interesting to see how it compares with another one that I did recently. It was a beef teriyaki from 2001, and it turned out that wasn't exactly what I was expecting it to be, but the uh, name Asian style beef strips sounds kind of similar. Uh, that menu, the uh, beef teriyaki, was around from 2001 to 2004, and as I said, this was introduced in 2012. Uh, as I said, no date code on here. If it weren't for the fact that it has the sticker from the commissary of the PX, we wouldn't have any idea uh, when it was from. Other than, of course, the fact that it does have the name of the entree in French, which they started doing a few years ago. And, of course, it has to be from 2012 or later. But, and we'll open it up. Let's see what we're getting with this one. And right off the bat, we have the entree. Here's the Asian-style beef strips with veg, and has a date cut on it of 6159, meaning that it was packaged on the 159th day of 2016. Oh, this is something I've never had before. Peppermint candy rings. This is kind of interesting packaging. I'm guessing these are basically going to be lifesavers, and that's what it feels like. I've never seen this before. It's a new... A new candy for me. And this one also has a side, a pretty dense side here, of uh, fried rice. And we have the heating sleeve, and this has a lot of information on it. It has the ingredients and the nutrition facts for both the Asian style beef strips and the fried rice. Here's the uh, ingredients for the beef strips if you want to look at those, and for the fried rice. And here are the nutrition facts, too. As I have a trans fat free wheat snack bread, blackberry jam, oh, and chunky peanut butter. So I guess we'll be able to make a uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Too bad this isn't a uh, twin pack of uh, wheat snack bread. Oh, and I didn't notice that this is also a uh, white wheat snack bread. And the day code of 6189. And then we have. Cocoa beverage powder. No other beverage in here, but this one is one that has an accessory pack that has a beverage in it. Uh, so one of those kind of light accessory packs. It's uh, accessory pack B, 6222 for the date code. This only has five items in it. We have the toilet paper, moist towelette, chewing gum, salt, and the beverage, which is a raspberry beverage-based powder, and one of these little uh, packs here that's uh, meant for a 20-ounce uh, bottle of water. And we also have, of course, the brown MRE spoon and a flameless ration heater. All right, here's everything that we're getting with this menu number 22, Asian-style beef strips. Doesn't look like a heck of a lot laid out here. But, of course, you do have a full-size 8-ounce entree and the 5-ounce side. And the wheat snack bread does have two spreads, the peanut butter and the jelly. And there are two beverages with the cocoa beverage powder and the raspberry beverage base powder. Peppermint candy is in a, probably the largest uh, pouch, but um, I don't think there's really too much in here. 1.13 ounces. And now it's time to go ahead and uh, heat up the entree on the side and check everything out. All right, and I was actually kind of expecting this one to have coffee in it. Uh, my original thought was I would heat up the entree and the coffee in the flameless ration heater just to do something a little bit different. But there is no coffee, and there also, another thing that's missing from this one is the hot beverage bag. Obviously, it wasn't considered necessary because you have a cocoa beverage powder in a pouch that you can shake it up in, and a beverage-based powder that you can put into a bottle of water, plus no coffee. So... There are a number of different ways you can go about heating up two uh, pouches in one flameless ration heater. 
The most common one is to put one pouch on either side of the heating elements. And that's the way I'm going to do it. But if you use that method, you want to make sure that you get the heating elements activated. And the best way to do that is by only having one pouch in there while it activates. We'll slide everything down there. And we'll make sure we get water into all of the individual heating elements. I can feel the heat starting. It's definitely activating. Just want to make sure everything is well soaked on the bottom here before I put the other pouch in. I'll put it in here first. Make it a little bit easier to handle. I'm just going to wait till that is really going before I put the uh, fried rice in there. Seems to be going pretty good now. And actually, since uh, I do already have this into the sleeve, I'm going to do the other method, which is simply putting the second pouch on the other side of the heating element, but outside of the bag. And so we're going to take this and put it at an angle on a rock or something, and give that about 15 minutes to heat up. Alright, and there really isn't a heck of a lot more to prepare. We have the wheat snack bread with the chunky peanut butter and the blackberry jam. Now, as I said, this is a trans fat free white wheat snack bread. Let's see how this differs from the standard. Looks pretty much like wheat snack bread, maybe a little bit lighter. It smells exactly the same, it smells like flour, kind of like a flour and water. The peanut butter, of course, you want to give that a good knead. I did that off camera to save a little bit of time. I suppose we'll spread that out a little bit. You can kind of see the chunks there, chunks of peanuts. And the blackberry jam, it's kind of a nice touch. I probably could have put these on half on one side and half on the other, so I'd try them individually, but Let's make it like a whole peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And that basically just leaves us with the peppermint candy rings as far as things to eat. These have a pretty simple list of ingredients. Sugar, corn syrup, natural flavor, and stearic acid. And yes, we have individual packaged it's like uh, experiment uh, lifesavers. Yep, yeah, they are lifesavers. No question about that. Not really so much something you think of uh, to have with your meal, but uh, nice to have these. You can put in your pocket and have them through the day or through the night. All right, and as I said, the raspberry beverage base powder calls for 20 ounces of water. We'll just use a uh, bottle of water that has about 20 ounces in it. And we'll just give that a good shake. It's got a nice artificial raspberry smell. And last but not least is the cocoa beverage powder, which takes six ounces of hot or cold water. I'm gonna go ahead and use cold water. Give that a good shake. It's a standard a classic of MREs. And 
that's just going to leave us with our entree inside. And uh, let's see. I did take this out about halfway through and flipped it around to try and get it heated a little bit better. I'm a little bit disappointed in that flameless ration heater. I probably should have uh, boosted it with some salt or something, but uh, it definitely get everything warm, just not, what you would say, hot. Here's the fried rice. I thought I broke that up a little bit, but apparently not. Let's see if I can, just to make it a little bit more appetizing. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Yeah, normally in reviews, I like to put the entree and the sides separate, even if they're meant to be together, just so I can try them both on their own. But this one really kind of seems like it, it needs to be together. But anyway, this is the fried rice. And here is the Asian style beef strips. That's somewhat somewhat better heated, being inside the flame ration heater. Alright, now let's see what these uh, beef strips look like. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, looks kind of similar to the um, teriyaki entree. Uh, first thing I noticed, it looks a little bit better than that did. All right, and that's what it looks like. And the first thing to note is that by putting the fried rice on the bottom and the beef strips on top, it makes for a pretty impressive presentation. Looks like a pretty big entree here. And it's very interesting that the last review I did was an old beef teriyaki one because I'm pretty sure that this is a reworking of that same dish. Uh, once again, it looks like something that could almost be called um, a beef chow mein. And once again, the uh, beef strips aren't exactly strips, they're like little chunks. I was expecting the beef teriyaki to be long strips of beef and I was kind of expecting the same thing from this. It's a little bit closer. Uh, this is a pretty good size one right here. So, in addition to the beef, we have this sauce, which is um, going to be heavy on the soy sauce, obviously. And I see there is um, a good amount of soybeans. Soybeans, and it says there's red and green bell peppers. I see red here. And I think I see a little bit of green, too. I guess those are the peppers. And this, I believe, yes, this is the missing ingredient from the beef teriyaki. It said it had water chestnuts in it, but I couldn't find any. But here is a great example of a water chestnut. So I'm really looking forward to trying this. Uh, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and try it. And why don't we start off by trying some of this fried rice. Fried rice in an MRE is never a, a terribly impressive thing. You can see it kind of gets into these clumpy little congealed clumps here until you, until you break it up. And it sort of doesn't even look like rice until it's broken up. But yeah, it is rice. And has a lot of uh, a lot of flavorings in there. The main one being soy sauce. It also has carrots and peas. You can actually see one of the peas here. It's not a terribly impressive thing, but it seems like they've uh, tried over the years to make it a little bit better. Yeah, that actually has a good amount of flavor to it. I'm actually kind of surprised. It's sort of a, a packaged kind of um, almost like a chemical kind of a taste, but it is a taste. I've had some of these where they're so bland. It's like despite the fact that it's supposedly fried rice, you. Doesn't feel like you're eating much of anything. Is uh, some of the carrot. All right, now we get to try the uh, beef strips. Let's get some some beef, some bean sprouts, and some water chestnut. Something I, as I said, I really missed from the last one. I'm kind of a fan of uh, water chestnuts. And that's really good. As I said with the beef teriyaki, it didn't really taste like beef teriyaki. And uh, this one, since it's not calling itself beef teriyaki, it's just Asian. The uh, soy sauce is definitely coming through. Yeah, it's got some good flavor. Pretty salty, as you'd expect from an MRE. Let's get some with the uh, fried rice, too. As with all MRE entrees, of course, this does have a lot of sodium in it. But, as I say a lot, a lot of times it can be hidden. Uh, despite the amount in there, they can still be pretty bland. This one, this has a lot of flavor. And the soybeans give it a little bit of extra texture. The water chestnuts give it a nice crunch. This is really good. I think this is going to be uh, pretty high on my list of favorites. I think it actually tastes better without the fried rice. It makes the fried rice better, 
but the uh, fried rice maybe if anything detracts from the uh, beef strips a bit. It's a very good entree. I don't think I'll have any problem finishing that. And some better example of the uh, the red peppers. I'm not seeing a lot of green, but there's a lot of red in there, giving it some color. The beef doesn't seem to be terribly overprocessed. It's really good. I can't think of too much to complain about it. Let's try a little more of this rice. Yeah, adding them together, you get uh, 13 ounces of food instead of just the eight for the entree. But we do still have some other stuff to check out. Let's have a little bit of the uh, raspberry beverage-based powder drink. That's nice and fruity. Of course, it's an artificial taste. It's like a, a Kool-Aid kind of a thing. This isn't a uh, carbohydrate electrolyte one, so it really is basically just like Kool-Aid. But the raspberry is nice. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned, but I think yeah, I think I did mention that. I, I believe this is a reworking of the uh, the beef teriyaki, and I'd say they did a great job. The Bean sprouts are a lot, uh, a lot fresher looking, a lot bigger, and the water chestnuts are a great touch. Water chestnuts you can actually see and bite into. Look at that one. That's nice. Sorry, I had to go back to that. That is, that is excellent. And yeah, the raspberry beverage is fine. If you don't want something sweet, you can just have water, but it's a, it's a great alternative to just having plain water. I will say a uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich doesn't exactly seem to go with Asian food, but it is what they gave us, so let's go ahead and try this out. Let's try the uh, trans fat free white wheat snack bread first. I didn't really leave much to try there. It seems to taste pretty much like your standard uh, wheat snack bread. Nothing, uh, nothing too special there. But uh, a lot of times um, I found the uh, trans fat free things seem to uh, not have as much flavor. I have been kind of disappointed with some of the uh, like the, the brownies and some of the other desserts. But since this is just wheat snack bread, it doesn't have much flavor anyway. It really doesn't seem to be too bad. And I'm not sure if I really can detect any difference between the fact that this is white wheat snack bread as opposed to just wheat snack bread. But let's try it with the uh, peanut butter and blackberry jam. That's really good. I didn't really get a chance to try the uh, peanut butter and the jam on their own with this snack bread, but um, of course I've had them before. And the combination is really good. And just having peanut butter on a wheat snack bread, it's a really dry thing. It kind of sticks to the roof of your mouth. And it just makes you thirsty. But this one, you get the sweetness of the jam. And it kind of uh, lightens it up a little bit. And plus, you're also kind of getting um, sweet and salty with the sweet from the jam and the salty from the peanut butter. And of course, it's chunky peanut butter, which you don't see too often in MREs. But it really does give it a little bit of extra texture, a little extra crunch, and um, it's a really good combination. Um, I wasn't really sure when I put both of them on there if I really wanted to do that, but uh, I'm glad I did. And it's almost like getting an extra meal out of this. You know, it kind of makes up for the fact that there really isn't a lot more to eat. All you really have is these uh, lifesavers. So, last thing we have is the uh, cocoa beverage powder beverage. And that, as usual, is very good. Just like a a nice uh, chocolate milk, uh, hot cocoa, obviously, if you heated it up. And um, yeah, that kind of is the way to go with this, but um, if you don't have a way to heat it, it's uh, it's fine cold, too. And generally, that's the way I prefer it. So, although we still have the gum, might as well try one of these lifesavers since they are a uh, one of the sides. That's fine. It's a nice, uh, nice way to freshen up your mouth a little bit. Uh, it does seem like a, a bit of a strange thing to have in as a candy or a snack. But as I said, I mean, if you don't get these all the time, there's anything wrong with putting this in your uh, one of your uh, BDU pockets and just having them whenever you need them. Help you stay awake if you're doing a fire watch at three in the morning. And to just freshen up your mouth, just like the gum. So it was a look at a 2016. Menu number 22, Asian-style beef strips with vegetables MRE. Thank you for watching.